We, we were very pleased to have the Boy Scouts this morning, as you indicated, and an opportunity to address a number of the visitors that are here with the, these young men this morning. This church has been a, a key part of the scouting program since 1931. We, we really think that the, tr the troop was started in uh, 1929, as was reported by R.E. King in a bulletin to the church back in 1931. But the charters and the, and the listing that we have say 1931. Uh, this church has done a great deal to the scouting program over the years. The scouting program has done a great deal to this church over the years. I look around this morning and I see t a couple of young men that I know that joined this troop in 1945. Clyde Robinson and Charlie Malone. So if you younger fellows want to talk to some of the younger, older guys about the scouting program, uh, these guys have been here a long, long time. And we do appreciate the efforts and the support of the church over these many, many years. Good morning and welcome. Uh, my name is Debbie Ainsworth. I am chair of the Outreach Committee. Uh, and one of the things that we do each year is uh, contribute to a week of compassion where uh, our denomination uh, looks across the world uh, to communities in need. Um, this year, the, group, uh, the DOC uh, Week of Compassion uh, offering is gonna be going to a group called CPAG, um, which is uh, the acronym for the Nicaraguan Council of Protestant Churches. Obviously, the CPAD is part, is in Spanish, and I don't know, not even want to try to pronounce that. Um, but I, when I started looking through the promotional materials for a Week of Compassion, I was pleased to find out that we were working with CPAD because I've got, because a number of us um, in a few weeks uh, will be leaving to go to Nicaragua to work with CPAD on a medical mission trip as well as a, a uh, uh, work project that will we'll put in clean water. So um, the video that you're getting ready to see in just a minute is uh, the promotional video for Week of Compassion featuring uh, a community member that CPAD works with. Our land did not have enough minerals and nutrients, and we were only able to plant beans and corn. And they did not return great yields. They only yielded very little. Now with the new techniques that we've gained from Sepad, now we can plant zucchini, squash, we can plant melons, we can plant tomatoes, peppers, and many more things. And now they yield in great quantities. And the citrus right now is flourishing. And that proves that the techniques that they've given us are achieving great results. They've given us a tank to hold water, and also so we'll be able to water our crops. They've given us a lot of training, handcrafts and skills, pastoral leadership workshops, None of the other organizations had given us the benefit that this project has given us. My husband and I, together, were helping our children to see that taking care of the environment is something that serves us both. That through them, their children that will come after them will also be ambassadors of taking care of the environment, of taking care of this little piece of land that generation after generation, every day, gets better and better. My name is Luisa Maria Lopez Matos, and I'm a farmer and a fighter. So we're 
actually going to be in Nicaragua the week of compassion and the, the project that we will be working on, uh, again, I'll be in the medical clinic with Dr. Doug Barra, uh, and, but the project that we'll be working on it will be supplying clean water to communities, uh, to families. Um, I, me, oh, so this is the prototype of what we're doing. Um, so it's cheap materials that are readily available in Nicaragua. Uh, we've seen videos where there'll be a barrel of water and this series of filters that actually nasty stream water comes out of and out of this becomes clear water. Um, these uh, units cost about $40 a piece. We've already collected about $2,000 from this community, um, but we're, we're still with time for donations. And I, uh, we uh, sincerely appreciate your support uh, for the project um, uh, and all that we do for outreach. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rising, if you're able to join me in a responsive call to worship. <coughs> People of faith, come and worship. God cares beyond our imagining. God has staying power that never fades. God gives power to the weak and strengthens the powerless. Nothing is beyond those who trust God. Weakness and exhaustion are facts of life. The young and fit eventually tire. But those who trust in God will renew their strength. Like an eagle rising in the sky, like a marathon runner at key performance, nothing will stand in their way. Tiredness and weakness are not an option. Hymn of Praise is number 25, Praise the, to the Lord the Almighty, verses 1, 4, and 5. <laughs>
us pray. God of all creation, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the source of all our blessings, and we humbly thank you for every gift that you have given us. Thank you for the incredible privilege we have each week of gathering as one family in your holy presence. Lord, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, you will work and move in power in our midst during this gracious hour of worship. We lift up our brothers and sisters who are not able to be here. We lift up, we lift up these men and women fighting for our country and all of those in service for others. For that is the true example of what you have taught us and shown us in everything your son Jesus did. Let our lives be the proof of your love, for only love can drive out all of the darkness. Help us all to have a spirit of Christ-like love and to go out and show that love to all of the world. We love you, God. We thank you, God. Amen. 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 chapter 9, verses 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel, for I do this of my own will. I have a reward, but of not my own will. I am trusted with a commission. When then is my reward? Just this that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make the full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I may win more of them. To the Jews I become, became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law Though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under God, Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in its blessings. Now for the children's sermon. <laughs> Normally I say good morning, but right now I'm going to pray because y'all have no idea how tough this crowd is sitting in front of me. <laughs> no, Jacob won't take me up on it. Okay, so to smile. Good job. Okay, so good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well done. So I came to church today, and I was a little ill-prepared the first time around, so I decided I'd get a little more prepared the second time around, and this is actually my third church service, so I'm really prepared. <laughs> really. So I got a pot. Yeah, 
it's kind of funny, but I do. I have a pot in church because I needed to hold all these things that I might need today because I was going to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would have my car key because when this children's moment bombs, I'm going to escape by my vehicle. So I have my car. Okay, you're not interested in that. No. I brought my phone because, honest and true, I think my GPS is a really big, big, big aid, so I know which way I'm going. I also happen to have a Bible app on here to help me out on which way I'm going. No, no, I, no Instagram, no. Instagram is no help. So, but, you know, sometimes the battery dies. So I have this. And this truly is older than dirt. It's put together in the 1700s, and it has all the little words that we need to remember, God's words that are so important. And today I opened to a psalm or two and read before I came in here. We all should have a little of this in our lives, don't you think? Sawyer, you need a lot of this. <laughs> I'll ask your mama, she'll tell you. Okay, I'm not disrespecting the book. I'm just placing it. Okay, now, um, every good woman knows that even if you don't have makeup on your face, eyelashes help. So yes, <laughs> I have my mascara. It also is good for leaving a mark. Still not Instagram. We also need to have Buzz Lightyear because Buzz soars to such great high heights. A pterodactyl? I don't have a pterodactyl. I have Buzz. Oh, gosh, help me. I got a hard crowd here. Y'all are doing well. Anyway, Buzz soars to infinity and beyond. Remember that phrase, because that is how much God loves you, to infinity and beyond. Now, for the scouts in the room, yes, I am now prepared. Thank you, David. And a knife is a wonderful thing to have, because in truth, it will help you cut out the pieces that you no longer need and that are not important or that maybe are not life-giving. So always be prepared to remove that which is not good. And finally, finally, this is the best part. Yes, this is the best part. I don't even need this anymore. Hold this. This is the best part because I got fried chicken in church. <laughs> I got a chicken wing. Now, do you know why I have this? To eat it. To eat it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I really do. But actually, the reason why I have this is to remind us that there's food. There is spiritual food that will nourish our soul. It's found in the word. It's found in community. It's found even here today, even in this children's moment. So always remember, take that food. Take that nourishment into yourself so that you can truly go to infinity and beyond. Do you think you're all capable? Yes. You're kind of capable. You all, are you capable? Right. Nash is like, I'm so capable if I get that chicken wing. <laughs> all right, shall we pray? What do you think? No? You ready? You don't look ready. All right, lock them and load them. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for preparing us to be the most that we can be, to serve you and serve the world, to be the Christians that we know we're called to be, and to most importantly, shine your love and your light into the world. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. Good job.
the hip she had already had fixed and her right wrist. She's had surgery to put a rod in for the hip and this morning they were to fix her wrist because they didn't want to do both at one time. So please keep her in your prayers. Thank you.
Christ welcomes everyone. Anyone seeking the life-transforming love of God is welcome to celebrate communion with us this day. Dear Lord, as we take this bread, we remember that you are the bread of life. You feed our souls, you nourish our hearts, you give us strength to run the race before us. As we partake of the bread, we feel your love. We thank you for the great price you, pray, you paid when you were crucified on the cross for us. And we thank you for your grace that is at work in our lives. Amen. Dear God, as we continue our prayer, help us to drink. Drink from the fountain of love that you represent by this cup. And to take and eat the bread that represents your body, the body of grace and peace and hope. As we partake of these emblems, help us to remember what they represent and help us to take those with us out into the world to show others that may not know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In that night, in the room with his disciples, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after he gave him thanks, he broke it. And said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you partake of it in remembrance.
Let us pray. Father God, thank you for opening our eyes this morning and touching our hearts. Put a hedge of protection around the gifts that have been given today for your glory. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. A reading from Mark. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought him to all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord for the people of God. And now, what y'all came here to do? Get your scout on. <laughs> Today, we have the honor and the pleasure of recognizing a candidate for the rank of Eagle Scout. This is an important and serious matter. In full awareness of the challenges of these times, the parents of this scout and his leaders have labored long and faithfully to develop him towards an alert and participating citizenship through the Boy Scout programs. Their efforts culminate today in the presence of the Eagle Scout badge. The success of these efforts will manifest in a way that this scout and every other Eagle Scout sets a social pattern for the times they touch. Will the congregation please rise for the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. may be seated. I now call on District Eagle Scout Review Chairman Bill McAllegood for the report of the Eagle Board of Review. Good morning. Good morning. The Boy Scout movement constitutes one of the most wholesome and significant developments of the century and this candidate has deemed worthy of the highest rank of its membership. The Eagle Scout rank represents accomplishment in scouting skills, in teamwork as a member, and a leader of his troop and patrol. 
and in scout spirit as represented by living the scout oath and scout law. Only 1% of all scouts in the United States achieve the rank of Eagle Scout each year. The Eagle Scout badge represents an understanding of community, nation, and a willingness on the part of the scout to help others. The Eagle Scout badge represents good hard work. On average, it takes about four years to achieve the rank. The Eagle Scout badge stands for honor and responsibility and a solemn obligation to do duty to God, to the nation, and to your fellow citizens. The Eagle Scout badge stands for strength of character. Of more importance, it represents what the boy will be in the future as he grows into manhood. Our investigation reveals that this scout has qualified in the requirements for personal character, good citizenship, in addition to the technical requirements required by the Boy Scouts of America. The Eagle Board hereby recommends this candidate to be raised to the rank of Eagle Scout. I'd like to ask Troop 21 Scoutmaster Brian Belote to come forward to presentation of the Eagle Scout candidate. It is my privilege, pleasure, and high honor to present to this Eagle Scout Court, Marion Ray Pippin III, Trip to you and me and several thousand of his closest friends. <laughs> Trip is the 16-year-old son of Beth and Ray Pippin Jr. and big brother to Hayes, age 14, and Nash, 10. <coughs> He's a faithful, active member of the First Church of Christ, its Elevate Youth Group, and Young Life on the Pamlico. He volunteers at Vidant Beaufort Hospital in the summertime. Tripp wrote in his letter of intent, which is part of his Eagle Scout rank application, I try to put God first in everything I do, and I believe he will lead me on the path that he has for my future. Tripp is a sophomore honor student at Washington High School, a member of the National Honor Society, he maintains a 3.8 grade point average. He has served as vice president of his freshman and sophomore classes. He's worked on his class homecoming floats and enjoys art and acting. He'll be in Washington High School's spring production of Beauty and the Beast in March. He's on his school's track, tennis, and JV football teams as well as the two-time 1A, 2A state champion swim team, which my sources tell me placed fifth of 28 at yesterday's regionals, and they're on their way to the state finals again. After high school, Tripp hopes to attend the four-year college and possibly serve in the United States Navy. He has strong interest in the fields of science and technology. Tripp joined Cub Scout Pac-21 as a Weeblow Scout, earned the Arrow of Light and the God and Family Awards. He joined Boy Scout Troop 21 in September of 2011 and has served as Troop Scribe, Quartermaster, Assistant Patrol Leader, Patrol Leader, and Assistant Senior Patrol Leader. He has earned 23 merit badges. For his Eagle Scout Leadership Service Project, Tripp chose as beneficiary Asbury United Methodist Church's Ruby's Garden Ministry, which by the way is named for his great grandmother. He then planned, developed, procured materials, and led his troop in building and setting up five raised handicap accessible plant beds. Chemically treated lumber and fasteners were strictly prohibited from this project so Tripp gathered up all the scraps, had his crew cut them into toy building blocks, sanded the rough edges, and gave them to the nursery when he was finished. Actual time log for this project was 183.5 man hours. All rise. Would the escort please present the candidate and his parents?
may be seated. <coughs> Will Scoutmaster and Brother Eagle Scout Lindsey Crisp please come forward <coughs> and administer the Eagle Scout charge. Will the mother present her son with the Eagle Scout badge? Scout now present his mother with the eagle pin. Will the scout present his father with the miniature eagle pin? In 2005, a new tradition was started. Eagle Scouts can now recognize that person he feels helped him the most in obtaining this high honor. Will the Scout now present the mentor's pen? Now an appropriate poem and a short musical interlude from the men's ensemble. A fond mother. A fond mother watches her boy where he stands, apart from his comrades today, as they place on his camp at her tunic a badge, an eagle, the emblem of right. It seems just a few short months have passed since he joined the youngster next door. How proud he was then of his tenderfoot pin as he told her the message it bore. But the years have gone as he struggled along to learn that the scout's law is about. He practiced them daily, the oath and the law, until now he is an Eagle Scout. You may smile at your worldly wisdom at this and say, why, it's only a pin. But I tell you no honors he'll gain as a man will mean just as much to him. The red, the white, and blue of the ribbon you see are the symbols of honor and truth. 
he has learned how to value the fine attributes in the glorious days of the youth. And the outfeeling wings of the eagle that rests on the breast of this night of today are the things which will lift him above petty deeds and guide him along the right way. Yes, it's only a pin, just an Eagle Scout badge, but the heart that's beneath it beats true and will throb to the last for the things which are good, a lesson for me and for you. Now, by the authority vested in me by the National Court of Honor of the Boy Scouts of America, it's my privilege and pleasure to pronounce you Eagle Scout Trip Pippin. This concludes the Eagle Scout Court of Honor. You may be seated. So you'll notice in your bulletins it says the Reverend Kinds, so that would be me. But um, actually, you might be grateful that it's not the Reverend Kynes, because I'm going to keep it really short, really, really short. <laughs> um, when I was asked to just have a few words um, to share with you all today, I really wanted to do justice to Tripp. And I wanted to share with you, when Tripp was going in to present his project, I got to see his mother out in the back hallway, bent over, praying for dear life in the dark on a pew. And I so appreciated that because I've had the privilege of being in here and walking past some of these mothers who are sitting there on that pew with their hands crossed, praying dearly for what's happening behind that closed door. I cannot imagine the amount of drive and push and commitment that comes from these parents to see that through. Tripp, you've got wonderful parents. Tripp is a wonderful young man. He, I'm kind of fond of him because he kind of helps my son through football, so I appreciate you, Tripp. But in all of this, I was just sitting here looking at this lovely insert, and it dawned on me that 
We have had someone in service in this church for a very long time, since 1996, help turning out these Eagle Scouts. And I personally would like to acknowledge, as well as this congregation, Brian Belote for what he's done. He has, in fact, turned out, with the help of all involved, over 30 Eagle Scouts in his time as Scoutmaster. service to your community is what we actually are called to as Christians. It's what we're called to do. And I was thinking about that word serve, and I thought, what does it stand for? What does it really mean? And so I broke it down into its letters. So the first S for me stands for selflessness. It's doing for the good of others without personal gain. It's really about being other-oriented. The E, the first one, is who we are in service to, everyone. Having a servant's heart knows no boundaries. Creed, color, life, anything, no boundaries. So as a Christian, when you serve, serve all. And then I got to the R, and I thought, what's a good one for R? Little did I know V was coming, which was even harder. But R means we're required. We're required just as Jesus set out to do, we are required to be in service to others. Jesus washed the least of these feet. We are required to be a servant and to serve. And then we got to V, and so I admittedly Googled words that started with V. I got voguish. That's kind of a good word. I got victims. It's not a good word. I had vehicle. But I wasn't sure where we were going to drive to on that V. And then it occurred to me, victory. When we serve the Lord, we truly are victorious. We win. And then finally, the last E is, well, serve. When? When do we do it? Every day. We should be, as Christians, called and answer that call every single day. Be in service to someone else for the good of that person, not personal gain. I've said it twice today, and I'll say it one more time for you all. I've been studying this word shalom, and shalom is a greeting that's given as a hello or a goodbye in the Hebrew language. It means both. It's giving of peace, but it's so much more than that. It's really a concept, and that word shalom means the wholeness of God's love and peace. And so when you greet someone as a Christian and you're in service to them, I ask you to think of that, that you are wishing them shalom, the wholeness of God's love and peace into the very fiber of their lives, every single bit of it. That's what we're called to do as Christians. Amen.
Know that yours is the kingdom of heaven. Yours is strength and mercy of God. Yours 